What do you guys think about the whole Theo Vaughan and Little Dicky situation? Pretty wild, isn't it? Don't you think it's pretty wild that Little Dicky was confronted, was grilled, was ambushed by Andrew Schultz on Flagrant and um, was basically taught, basically asked, hey, what do you think about Theo Vaughan saying that you are a joke stealer? You are a thief. You are Carlos Mencia reincarnated, Little Dicky. You are brendan shaw reincarnated the guy who fucking has to steal those bud light jokes right to be fair we should have known come to think of it we should have known brendan shaw's comedy career was over the moment he stole that guy's joke in it do you guys remember that that guy that was um on tiktok who had that bud light joke about like um i don't know why people think bud light makes you gay and he sucked it off and he started like you know firming at the mouth and shit and then Brendan copied that joke at his comedy shows and acted like he didn't see the joke on TikTok. We should have known that Brendan had to quit or was never destined to be great when he had to steal that level of a joke. Because I think stealing jokes is probably something that happens a lot more often than people think. I think it's pretty easy to steal a joke, especially if you're like a small, a smaller comic. You're not really that well known. I think it's pretty easy to go around stealing good material and just doing it locally. I think people, I, th I think personally, stealing of jokes is something that happens way more often than you think it does. I think people just do it in the beginning to maybe allow themselves not to bomb, maybe as a fail safe and stuff. And then obviously as you get bigger, then you obviously try to write your own jokes. But I think it happens a lot more often, especially if you are living in a small town um, where people don't really probably know that much about other comedy outside of what you do or what they see on the bait thing. So if you are smart enough and you change words well enough and shit, you can rewrite them in your kind of own words. You can probably get away with it. So I think it's more prevalent than people think it is. But I just think nowadays with the internet and with social media, um, it's just too risky to do, especially with a comic like Theo Vaughn, who's like got a massive fan base. Um, he has a very unique sense of humor. Um, so his type of jokes are very specific and very kind of, um, are very, very specific and very much catered around his personality, right? You can't really replicate a Theo Vaughn type of joke. They're really kind of specific to him. So um, this little dicky guy was a bit dumb to try to steal it. Now, I don't think he actually stole it personally. That's my my personal thing of, of seeing everything that's been going on with the drama. I don't think he actually stole the joke. If anything, I think one of his writers probably did. But obviously, you know, little dicky is a representative of his writing team he's the quote-unquote leader so if a joke does get stolen and he then ends up using it in his show dave or whatever it's gonna feel like he's the one that stole it even i don't think he did i think he's probably got a writer's room where they're you know thinking of ideas for jokes for his shows or whatever it may be his tv shows and his maybe his live shows and they come up with premises and they just kind of run with them i think probably someone in his team stole Fio's joke i don't think he stole them but i think he still has to kind of fess up to it, or at least kind of you know not cop please which kind of is what it sounded like so i'm going to play a video here that i kind of put together these clips that kind of give you a timeline of what happened and then at the end you'll see the interview with schultz and little dicky where he asks them about um Theo and what he thinks about people thinking he stole his joke so let's run the clip and go from there this on a wooden shirt did i tell you see that a wooden shirt yeah he made his son a shirt out of plywood for christmas what yeah he wanted the kid to wear it oh oh yeah he did and i remember i was um wait a minute is it a stiff shirt or is it he make it like little, little itty bitty tiny pieces of plywood and weave it all together oh no i was pretty stiff all these shirts are 100 percent wood <laughs> what a concept i have never heard of this this is very innovative oh shit little dicky. yeah maybe Everybody maybe shame have you little dicky stories shit, shit? That have you steals so many of my jokes man it's crazy like the show Dave? actually yeah damn yeah. that's have, which up. what's one joke that you've seen that you're like that's mine too many all right fair enough wait that's a little dicky show yep yeah. dave he's stealing your jokes i don't know who if he i don't know what's going on but they got a lot of barred content up in that <laughs> bitch i'll say that <laughs> oh. <clears throat> but hmm. that's all right so you hate him i, I don't know him but I know I don't borrow his shit. Ooh. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Feels pissed. Okay. There was that stuff with Theo Vaughn. 
on. He was upset. Like, how do you deal with how do you deal with something like that? I've never. I'm happy that you brought that up. So I have never stolen any jokes whatsoever. But like, how do you handle that? Like, I don't think that. Well, that particular instance, I, I think to myself, well, I don't understand why he would think that I I, I haven't stolen. You know, the, uh, to catch i don't know if you guys are aware of the context of it and i only recently am aware because i saw a comment that it said, was just on the internet and, and yeah yeah yo i never noticed until i put this clip together how insufferable is andrew schultz why is he interrupting the guy so much i don't know much about little dicky but from what i can see so far watching this little clip he seems very introverted very awkward very almost jittery and nervous in his demeanor little dicky like genuinely he seems a little bit like you know whatever Someone like that, you need to let him just speak. You know what I mean? You just let, let, like make him feel comfortable because he feels kind of nervous. Maybe he feels a bit cornered. You know what I mean? He feels a bit awkward. You know, like you can tell little Dickie's a little bit like sensitive. He kind of needs to be spoken to a certain way. And like Schultz is like talking to him like, okay, what do you say? It's like, give him a chance to speak, brother. Like, calma. Let him speak. He's clearly a bit nervous. He clearly feels like his back is against the wall a little bit. Even if he's lying, whatever, let the guy speak. Please. It's not like, leave him alone. <laughs> it's a, why, is he, why is he barking at him like this? Is it the Adderall? What do you guys think? Is it Adderall or something? Or is he just, or maybe it's like um, Schultz in his brain thinks if he keeps interrupting, because I think Brendan does it too. This is kind of a Brendan thing where he doesn't, he asks you a question and then before you finish answering the question, he asks you another question. Big up a uh, Mexican cancer. Can someone salsa. explain Schultz's haircut? I thought it was for a movie role, but he's had it for a long time now. <laughs> I loved, I loved the duality of the chat and the fucking donation. Big up Mexican salsa. Um, I don't, I can't explain his haircut. I just asked what's wrong with Schultz and his questions, and Uche is like, no, he's just a prick. <laughs> What's up with his haircut? He's just a prick. Honestly, Schultz is fucking the worst, isn't it? Um, to be fair, Mexican salsa, I think the haircut is an attention thing. Similar to Bert taking off his t-shirt, I think Schultz just loved the attention. So he just cut his hair in a way where people are going to constantly ask questions. Oh, why do you have your hair that way? So I think it's just an attention-seeking thing. That's it. I don't think he even thinks it looks good. It's just a good way to get attention. That's why I think. I honestly do think so. I don't even think he likes a haircut. He's just attention seeking. It's like a very clever, subtle, I won't say subtle, but it's a non like obvious way to look like you're getting attention, you know? It's like the guy that walks around with a big hat, with like a furry hat, or paints his nails and like, oh, like, and acts like it's no big deal. It's like, you know, most people don't really see guys with nails painted. You know how you're doing it. You're peacocking. You're trying to get people to be interested in you and shit, whatever. Anyway, that aside, thank you, Mexican Salsa. I appreciate you. Um, Schultz needs to fucking relax. Let the guy speak. Please, brother. Let him answer the question. I think he was doing like a bar stool show and you guys both had a similar idea in the show, right? Yeah. Where he had it in I something and, the, and then you he had it on a I podcast. Guess. He said it on about a podcast. wooden and then, shirt thing. Yeah, it was like a wooden shirt that you guys had in the show. Now, I remember when we came up with the wooden stuff in the writer's room and it was totally built on a different idea that was about like a one single, like a man whose entire house was made of wood down to the clothing. Yeah. And then it ended up, we ended up not going with that storyline. Yeah. Ended up doing one small, really inconsequential scene of my series where a guy be up crash appreciate you brother schultz looks like the pringles guy if he had hair <laughs> yeah exactly good point exactly be up crash exactly great point um i actually believe him and i think what he said was here was very key they came up with the wooden shirt thing in the writer's room so i have a feeling most likely somebody from little dicky's writer's room is definitely a fan of comedy podcasts right and just happened to hear that fucking iconic wooden shirt thing that Theo has said many times on different shows and obviously had it in the back of his head and whatever. Um, maybe a bit of parallel thinking involved there. But I don't think Little Dicky sat down and copied Theo's joke. But I think as a leader, as the face of your brand, of your TV show, of your studio, you have to kind of own up to the fact that some of your writers maybe had stolen or got inspired by what Theo has said. The problem with the Theo joke is this. 
if I remember correctly, Theo didn't say only the the, t the wooden t-shirt joke. I think Theo's main issue and why he was so mad because that clip when he's on that show with Dave Portnoy, right? That podcast on Barcel, I remember that. I think even Coyler mentioned it. Um, he was really on edge in that on that show. He like he wasn't in the in the best of mood, but also he was really angry when they brought it up. I've never really seen Theo like that. He's usually quite chill. Um, you know laid back kind of guy he seems like he's non-confrontational but he seemed really annoyed and I think I remember him mentioning after the fact that it wasn't only that wooden t-shirt joke it was other jokes too so there was other jokes in the series Dave that Theo said that most likely they stole from him um, so you know let's let's be real here and like I said before Theo's sense of humor the way he says things it's very unique so if you do steal his jokes it's going to be super obvious so i don't believe i don't i believe most likely they did steal it i just don't think it was little dicky that stole it i think some of these writing team did it but i think little dicky should own up to the fact that it happened under his watch and kind of let bygones be bygones but you can't deny it because it's obvious do you know what i mean like where else did you find that inspiration from guy was just selling wooden shirts yeah i promise you it wasn't i've never and i whenever i see content of theo vines online as i'm scrolling i totally think it's funny and i respect it yeah. i have no animosity i've just never met him we have so many mutual friends yeah i always was under the understanding that like accusing a co comedian of stealing jokes is like a major taboo oh so, i think they don't like each other anyway if they've got loads of mutual friends why haven't they met why haven't their mutual friends ever put them in touch I've got a feeling that mutual friends know or they've had some other beef happen. That seems odd, isn't it? If you've got a ton of mutual friends, why haven't they put you together in one room to kind of hash it out? I think there's some other beef there. No? There's some other beef there, isn't it? There's some other beef there. What's, uh, big up Ucho, what are you saying here? The reason Theo brought it up is because it becomes the jerk because uh, someone on Barcelona host accused him of stealing a joke from the show Shameless. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. So he was defending himself like, I don't steal jokes. This little dicky guy steals jokes. Okay, cool. But yeah, it feels really odd that he's, their friends wouldn't have put them in touch if they've got many friends in common. It seems like they've got some actual beef going there that they probably won't get along. But I'd like to see them sit down on a pod. That'd be quite cool though, to see them sit down. I think there'll probably be a lot of jokes there to be had. Maybe not stealing them, but yeah. Fio doesn't seem like he's fond of those guys. It's, it's big the deal. biggest, yeah. It's so big, big deal. I, I was like, well, just reach out to me and let's talk. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, exactly, Chris Mack. You're right. Yes, Chris Mack, that's the one. That's the show that Fio found out that um, Brendan used his face for the promo, yeah. Brendan used uh, Fio's face, I think, for the fight companion. That was a legendary lineup that Brendan lied about where he put, like, Joey Diaz's face there and Fio's face there. A lot of people on the Fire the Kid read it, and I agree with them now. At the time, I didn't because I thought it was a conspiracy. I, a lot of people on the Find the Kids subreddit said that they just think Brendan put people's faces on the flyer without asking them, hoping they'd see it and then just agree to do it. He never even asked permission. He just did it just, you know, knowing they would, you know, they would not turn up or they'll flop just for the fucking promotion and the marketing. Imagine somebody doing that. Imagine one of your friends using your faces, using your face as promo without asking you just to kind of drum up fake fucking anticipation. And if I'm not mistaken, you know, fear strikes me as somebody that maybe suffers from anxiety or a little bit, right? Imagine if you're, you, you suffer from anxiety and one of your friends puts you on a flyer that you didn't agree to attend the event. Then you get all your fans DMing you. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see you on the Calabasas Fight Companion. And now suddenly you're thinking, hold on, I, I'm not doing fight, Calabasas Fight Companion. I've got this other thing going on. And you start getting anxious. You start getting stressed. You start fucking hyper hyperventilating. Like, imagine your friend causing you all those emotions because they tried to get some eyes and ears on their shitty stream. I'd be so mad. Never, and I have nothing but respect from what I see of his content yeah. online, but I never have stolen any joke. That's really my immediate reaction. Yeah. It's not like, I'm not hurt by it. I'm just like, why would that, why would he be so insistent that I, when I never would? Right, right. Two people can't have the same idea. It's a pretty broad idea. Mm, it's a broad idea, but it's also very specific. I don't like the fact that he's arguing about it. Maybe it's the comedian in him. It's the artist in him. It's the professional in him that feels that feels slighted, that feels kind of attacked, right? But the way he's arguing it makes it look like he stole the joke, right? The lady doth protest too much. I think he should be okay to be like, hey, I understand why Theo thinks that. I didn't steal the joke. 
maybe someone in my writer's room did, which is not good to say because it sounds like you're throwing your fucking team under the bus. But he is arguing about this too profusely for me personally, because that joke is very unique, right? Who else have you heard talk about a fucking wooden T-shirt in the way that he did, right? Most likely it did. It's not true thing, right? We all know that story probably isn't true about some kid in his area having a wooden T-shirt, but still it's the premise behind it that's very unique and comes from a very specific point of view, you know. Like yeah. the idea of wooden clothes. And, and also, let's be honest too, as funny as the joke is, the joke isn't funny because it's funny. The joke is funny because of the way Theo says it. So the fact that he's trying to die and hold on to this is really odd. It's like, come on, it's not even that good of a joke. Like, let's relax, you know? Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm sure there are, I don't know. See, it's kind of specific the way you just yeah, said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, like, I'm sure men like, and women are different. Yeah. Yeah. Very one dimensional. <laughs> <laughs> Why does why does he have to laugh like that? Have you ever met anybody that laughs like that? In real life, at like the slightest bit of a joke. Yeah, like come on, bro, relax, man. Is it really that funny? <sighs> Shorts is a bit. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I. I, I have you a... guys spoken at all? No. Why don't you guys just talk? Why not? Yeah, I, I would. Because um, I think a lot of times. Oh, you see that? Why don't you guys talk? Yeah, uh, um, I think there was an attempt to make them talk before and it didn't go well. That's what I think happened. I think there was an attempt to make, to have them come together and talk and it didn't go well. See how little Dickie responded? Why don't you guys talk? Um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, they're not going to talk. They're not, they're not cool with each other at all. Zero. Maybe because little Dickie feels like. He oh he was owed a private direct conversation before Theo blurted it out on a pod. Who knows? Or maybe because Theo just doesn't want to talk to him and he, and he feels the vibe. But I don't think they're ever gonna be friends. This <laughs> this sounds like they don't like each other at, at all. Sometimes what would happen in these situations is you know both sides explain their part and then you go oh okay I see why this you know these two different comedians came to this conclusion and it wasn't sure. somebody that's no, trying I, to bite. I, I'm yeah. definitely down to, I have no beef with him whatsoever. I don't like when, you know, if, if I post something and I see like, stop stealing Theo's jokes. Like, it's just, I don't, I never have. To oh, Theo's fans are getting to him as well. Theo's fans are getting to him. Interesting, right? Theo's fans are bombing his fucking comments saying, stop stealing Theo's jokes. So he's definitely seeing all the comics and shit. Okay, cool. I don't, I, <laughs> Again, I don't think he stole it, but he's cut, he's sounding very guilty. That's the only thing that's odd. Big up NJ Ranger. He's doing an avant-garde Marina Abramovich style conceptual art bit where he does a realistic interpretation <laughs> of Waluigi. <laughs> a performance art of <laughs> Waluigi is fucking insane. Marina Br Abramovich cosplaying as Schultz, cos like you know, pretending to be Loa Luigi is fucking nuts. But bring up NJ Ranger, appreciate you, man. Oh, absolutely legendary. I love that clip of Marina Abramovich speaking about um Kim Kardashian. An amazing clip. Where she's like, Yeah, I met her once, I don't need to meet her again. Like it was so fucking brutal, man. I love her, man. She's so cold, so direct, so amazing. Big up NJ Ranger. Done that. Yeah. And I think the, there's only one joke in question. It's yeah. not like I've made like a career, uh, you know what I mean? I don't even know what other jokes were even questioned. Oh, let's be careful about that. Let's not say this on the internet, little Dicky. Let's not say I haven't made a career out of stealing jokes because you know what the internet is like. The internet will start digging. The internet always wins and they'll find instances where you stole some other jokes. Don't put out a challenge. Don't put out that challenge. Be careful, little Dicky. Don't put out that challenge. The internet will destroy you. People put together a compilation, a 10 minute compilation of all the fucking jokes you stole. Relax, my friend, relax. It's not that deep. Relax. Yeah. Yeah. Three one... seasons of television. Right. Yeah. One joke. yeah, that's yeah, That's the thing. I think like now with the internet, there are so many more people putting things out that the possibility of two people having a similar idea is infinitely higher than back in the day where there would be 10 comedy specials a year. Yeah. And you just need to cross over in those 10. Now you have a million pieces of content that are out there in the world and you're going to see people with similar ideas. You see it happen with memes. You see it happen with, you know, written pieces. You see all these types of... Schultz is saying all of this, but I don't think he reacts very well. Schultz is saying all this stuff, 
But I think he would react very negatively if he saw somebody copy one of his premises or one of his jokes. I don't believe him. I don't think he's going to be the cool guy if he sees somebody copy something that he said. He would not react well. He looks like he'd react like very angrily. He'd get very fucking snappy. He'd start saying some big words. He'd start threatening people. Like He doesn't look like a guy that will take it on his chin. So he's talking all this shit now and trying to act like he's you know understanding on both sides. But if somebody stole one of his jokes, I think he'd react very, very angrily. The thing. So I don't think it like immediately means that one person is stealing from another. All I know is that my soul feels very pure and clean. Like I, do I just think you guys are both... <laughs> what? My soul feels very pure and clean. <laughs> he didn't accuse you of raping his sister, you fucking donut. He just said you might have stole a joke. Like, it's not that deep. What the fuck's he talking about? My soul is very pure and clean. Come on, little dicky. Like, what? <laughs> Look how he's sitting as well. Oh, bless him, man. Anyway, he seems very precious, but he needs to relax, man. He's like, he's taking his two... I don't know. Just chill. Not that deep, bro. Both great, and I would love you guys to both just be like, "Hey, set it up. You're yeah. friends with everybody. Right? I, I will. Yeah. I will set that up. Yeah, <laughs> I will." Oh, that was a bit spicy, isn't it? Set it up. You're friends with everybody, right? Oh, that was a little bit. That's a little bit sassy. You're friends with everybody. <laughs> little dicky sunning fucking shorts. What was that about? Ooh. We'll set that yeah. up for you. Yeah. I will set yeah. that. Oh, that laugh. Clean, like I. Do I not. just think you guys are both great, and I would love you guys to both just be like, "Hey, set it up. You're yeah. friends with everybody." I, right? I will. Yeah. I will set that up. Yeah, I will set that yeah. up for you. Yeah, I will. That laugh. What? For you. Yeah, I'll set that up. Yeah, I will set that up for you. Yeah, I will set that up. I will set that up for you. Yeah, yeah, I will set that up for you. Yeah, I will set you. Yeah, I will set that up for you. Yeah, I will set that up for you. Yeah, I will set that up. Let's go for you. Yeah, I will set that up for you. Yeah, I will set that up. Let's go for you. Yeah, I will set that up. Let's go on for you. Yeah, I will set that up. Let's go on the for you. Yeah, I will set that up. Let's go on the beach and for you. Yeah, I for you. Yeah. For you, yeah, I will set yeah. for you, yeah, I will set yeah, that up. Let's go. For you, yeah, I will set yeah, that up. Let's go. On the beach and post it for you, yeah, I will set that up. Let's go. On the beach for you, yeah, I will set yeah, that up. Let's go. On the beach and post it for you, yeah, I will set that up. Let's go. On the beach and for you, 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 for you. For you, yeah, I will set that up. Let's go on the beach and post for you, yeah, I will set that up. Let's go on the beach and post for you, yeah, I will set that up. Let's go on the beach and post for you, for you, yeah, I will set that up. Let's go on the beach and post with Brad, yeah, but it's in Texas VP, it feels equivalent, you know. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Oh, look, look at POV. The moment has passed, please. Okay, boo-hoo. You fucking party pooper. POV, you party pooper. Anyway, I ended there. <laughs> oh, here comes the crappy face. Oh, Kyla, you're a piece of shit. You are a piece of shit. You really are. You all are pieces of shit. <laughs> Grab me for that. <laughs> yeah, big up for your Appreciate you. Big up for your It's just that one joke, you curb song. It's just the one joke. Exactly, yeah, exactly, 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 Fyodor. You got to be careful. I only stole one joke. I've never stolen any other jokes. I've never stolen a joke. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, you know I'll go on. You know I'll go on. AZ going to need both cuffs. <laughs> You guys are fucking stupid. I swear to God. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's chill there. Let's chill there. Um. So, in conclusion, big up, Ch Chief Callum. That shirt made out of wood joke was way too specific. Exactly. There we go. There we go, Chief Callum. There we go. There we go. So, in conclusion. I don't think little Dicky stole the joke, but he looks very shifty. That could be because of his kind of, you know, 
Jewish ancestry, right? He's got that whole shifty thing going on, right? I don't know. Maybe that's the case. Even there, right? It looks like, hmm. you know, he's kind of looked at, he's got that side eye going there. So who knows what's going on there? But, but, but I think he's telling the truth. I do think he didn't steal the joke. Most likely somebody in his group stole the joke. Um, but he has to be a leader and kind of own the fact that he represents his team, you know? He has to kind of represent his team. Um, he has to maybe take the blame for it and accept that maybe that did happen. And of course, you know, just let it bygones be bygones. It's not that big of a deal. The more he keeps kind of professing his innocence, the more guilty he looks and it's going to get worse if he just keeps kind of fighting it because people are going to find other instances where he's maybe stolen jokes and it's been more blatant so far it looks like it's one joke it looks like it's one joke but if he keeps kind of crying about it i'm sure the internet especially fios fans especially fios fans that don't like him will will go out of their way to find other instances where it looks like he's stolen other jokes so sweep it under the rug say it happened apologies keep it moving and whatever it may be it's no big deal um because in general you know i, I hadn't watched much of dave but from what i did watch of dave there's not a lot of comedic sensibilities between the both of them anyway. So there's no need for you to even steal many of Theo's jokes because the vibe of Dave is completely different to the vibe of what Lil Dicky was doing with Dave in general. You know? no, yeah, the vibe of Dave was different from what Theo did. So why would you need to steal his jokes anyway? You know, it doesn't make any sense. So I hope um, they do kind of, I hope he does accept that and kind of move on. Um, whether or not they can be friends again, I don't think so because it seems like, you know, they don't really like each other as people or something there. There's a bit of animosity and weirdness going there, a bit of static, who knows? But let's see what happens going forward. Let's see what happens going forward. Um, what are you guys saying in the chat? Someone in the chat says, Satino, I have to agree with that. Um, I don't think Santino is that dumb to think that nobody would find out. Yeah, I, I don't even think it's Santino. It could be anybody. Like, anybody that's a fan of pods might have heard Theo say that fucking t-shirt joke and ran with it. It was iconic, right? Do you got you you we all remember when he when he originally dropped it on that Rogan show, right? Let me play the start of the clip again. We all remember when it happened. Like anybody could have heard this. This guy made his son a wooden shirt. Did I tell you that? A wooden shirt. Yeah, he made his son a shirt out of plywood for Christmas. What? Yeah. He wanted the kid to wear it? Oh, yeah, he did. And I remember I was... um. Wait a minute. Is it a stiff shirt or is it he make it like <laughs> little itty bitty tiny pieces of plywood and weave it all it's together? So dumb, oh, no, it was pretty stiff. All these shirts are 100% wood. <laughs> what a concept. I have never heard of this. This is very innovative. Oh, shit. Little dick, yeah, yeah. So I think we all remember hearing it. So it could have been anybody. I don't think it was just Santino. I know Santino's one of the writers on there, but it could have been completely anybody. Anybody that's a fan of pods, sorry, that's a fan of comedy podcasts could have heard that joke and could have maybe internalized it without realizing that a bit of fucking parallel thinking, right? A bit of parallel thinking there. And then boom, in you know, spat it out like it was their own joke. Big up Valdez. Theo already said it was more than one joke. Internet gonna internet. Yeah. Pess cooked. Exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Like I only stole one joke. I promise. It wasn't any more. I promise. There's only one. And then tomorrow you're gonna have an entire compilation up on the fucking Fear Von Reddit of all these other instances. And they they probably you know what they'll probably end up doing? They'll probably end up doing like a like for like. They'll put like the Dave joke and then they'll put the Fear joke. The Dave joke, the Fear joke. <laughs> <laughs> they'll make an entire compilation of it like he's playing with fire man he needs to relax he needs to relax but hey let's hope that doesn't happen let's hope that doesn't happen